What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today, we're going to talk about how we have been married to three different people. The second one was my favorite, by the way. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. That's awful for so many reasons. Yeah. I don't even know what I meant when I said that. Yeah. But Sean and I are having fun doing these solo episodes. If you have any other topics you want us to talk about, please let us know. And... If you like the show, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to wait for a second so that you can subscribe and also hit the the thumbs up or give it a rating, depending on what platform you're on. But today, we have a fun episode, and it is all about how we've been married to different people Mm -hmm. and how in marriage, the goal is not to be the same person 50 years from now as you are today. It's to help each other grow. And so in that process, you kind of, get married to different types of personalities i distinctly remember when andrew and i were dating he gave me this book called meaning of marriage and told me to read it this is like before we started talking about marriage but he just said it was he thought it was important for our relationship and i distinctly remember within that book the author talks about how you're going to be married to different people you can only be like even if you're only married once you're going to be married to different people over the course of your marriage because people evolve and they change and Life happens and that changes you, whether you like it or not, whether you're trying to change or not. And you have to accept that who you marry on the day of your wedding isn't going to be the same person in seven years. And that should be a good thing. So yeah. Sean and I have, I hope this is obvious, mm-hmm. only been married once and that <laughs> yeah. is to each other. But yes. already seven years in, we feel like we've we've each changed so much and life has changed so much that it feels like we're married to different people. So I feel like I could almost argue that we've been married to four different people. Do you have these or five. broken down? Yeah. It's going to be a lot, whatever the numbers. It's it might be it might be more than three. But yeah. the beauty of marriage is that who you say I do to on your wedding day is not going to be the same person that you spend the rest of your life with. Mm-hmm. And the important thing is that we're both looking to grow and mature mm-hmm. and learn more about each other and ultimately become the best, most sanctified, most purpose-filled, most uh, generous, thoughtful people that we can be every day and help each other be there, right? Yeah. I also want to ask you guys, too, who are listening, like, do you agree with the statement? We're going to, like, really break this down and go into what we mean. But do you think who it is you're with at this moment is the same exact person they were when you first started dating or when you were married, please tell us down in the comments um, if this concept like resonates with you or not. I'm actually, we've gotten a lot of feedback that couples listen to the show together. So if you're with your partner, go ahead and pause and talk that over. Cause it's kind of an interesting <laughs> yeah. thing to, to think about. Gently. But, Don't let it bring up a weird <laughs> argument. Uh, but let's start by talking about who we were when we met. Yeah. And then we'll walk through how we each change through the different stages of life. So wow. when we were dating, it is so funny to think back. This was 2013. I was a sophomore or junior in college. Mm-hmm. I was wearing those, uh, shoot, ponchos. Yep. That you can buy like at the street markets in Mexico. I had dreadlocks. I had long this hair. This is not what we were dating. I had dreadlocks before we were dating. You're right. Yeah. I had long hair. You had long hair. And I was kind of like this footloose and fancy free guy. I had one mm-hmm. t-shirt in my closet on purpose. Um, my nickname was bro. Yeah. <laughs> and I was playing college football. And honestly, I don't think I was probably a very good boyfriend in a lot of ways. But um, mm-hmm. at least if I was going to do the whole thing again, I would be a better boyfriend now. You would be a phenomenal boyfriend now. But I think that that goes into exactly what we're talking about. Like you evolved and changed and grew. Um I think an observation too from you or like from me about you is in the dating phase, you were just knowing you now, you were so less confident in like who it, who you were like specifically, you were still trying to figure out like what direction you were going to go and where your like morals and values truly like were planned. I don't know. You just were more uncertain. I was like focused on football and trying to graduate, which I was barely stumbling through yeah. at Vanderbilt. Barely crossed the finish line in that one. I would say too, for me, I was in the exact same boat, but it looked different. I was 
struggling to a certain extent because I was aimless. I didn't have a job. I had retired from gymnastics. I really didn't know where I was living. I was bouncing around LA to Des Moines to Nashville, really just like searching in life for my next thing. And I felt like I was in an identity crisis. I, I don't know. I just, I really didn't do anything at all. And you worked out. I worked out a lot. And when I was dating Andrew back then, my, the most confident I felt in myself was when I was with you. Cause I felt like I could, you were the only outlet where I could just be me and be accepted for me. And I had, I just had massive scars of insecurity. That's what I was going to say. You were, you, your insecurities prevented you from engaging with life. Yeah. Like you would meet a new friend and the first thing is not, hey, let me learn about this person. It's, what are they thinking of me? Yes. Which is like, ah, I'm glad we've grown out of that. Well, and I also think that's why our dating life was kind of so special because I think you were in a similar situation. You weren't very like insecure or scarred that way, but you were uncertain. And I felt like whenever you and I were together, when we were dating, we were like the truest forms of ourself. And it was really special. It was like the first time we had each decided to go on an adventure that we wanted to go on. Yeah. And we did it together. Yeah. Which was really special. But we were but, both like figuring it out. Yeah. And living in a dorm room the whole time doing that. Yes. I would say, okay, so my goals when I was a sophomore in college was I was I was trying so hard to get my civil engineering degree so that I could build wells in a third world country. Like I thought, how cool would it be to provide water mm -hmm. to people who don't have access to it? Which and is like incredible. do that. Uh and then it's so funny that we get married and that totally or the NFL mm -hmm. and our marriage totally just like moves us in a different direction. Um, but I'm thankful for it. Yeah. I truly think like the first versions of ourselves that we were within our relationship was just naive, insecure. We were both kind of lost, just kind of living life for fun. There was not like a purpose to it yet or like a direction, but we were just kind of aimlessly gallivanting around life together and being kids. Which I think is a side effect of youth. Oh, for sure. You know? I don't think there's anything bad with that. But it definitely for us was like. That's the biggest fly I've ever seen in my life. I was going to say, what are you looking at? Do you see the fly in the top left corner? That's the biggest fly I've ever seen in my Where life. Is it? It's on the light. Oh, wow. Do you want to kill it? What do I do? It's huge. You're really distracted by it. So I feel like you it's should. It's the size of a wasp. Hold on. Is it a wasp? Today's podcast is brought to you by Oath Care. I love this one. Oath Care provides complete support for mothers experiencing the fertility, pregnancy, and pediatric journey. Oath gives you direct access to maternal and child health specialists paired with a support system of fellow mothers. We're huge fans. We recently discovered Oath Care and it's been great. Oath matches you with your own care team, a stage based specialist, a mental health therapist, and a trained parent guide to answer any and all questions you'll have seven days a week, all within one chat. I feel like this should be required. As a parent? Yes. You can join Oath Care for free for a stress free community to connect with fellow parents moderated by experts for credible support and solutions. It's really cool. It's like having a big community at your fingertips. And as a parent, you need that more than ever. You can even attend expert-led workshops on topics like breastfeeding, fertility, oh sleep, God. and more. This is amazing. Why didn't we find this sooner? Anyways, for more information, you can check out their website, oathcare.com, or download the Oathcare app for free directly from the Apple App Store or Google Play at the link in our bio. You good now? <laughs> I tried to kill it earlier and it came back. Why? <laughs> Is it going to come back to life again? Oh, five minutes. <laughs> Curled up and then it came back. <gasps> You're scarred. It's scary because it's the biggest fly I've ever seen. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing that we were young, gall gallivanting around the world, whatever, doing aimless stuff. I think that's great. But I think... We're drastically different people than those people now. Yeah. I was thinking this morning how interesting it is 
that the older you get, the closer you feel like you are to your purpose. Mm -hmm. The closer you feel like you are to providing value to the world. But like the <laughs> the physically worse you feel, and mm -hmm. like the le with kids, you have less energy to like go about executing that purpose. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm just pumped up. Like honestly, I I am so fortunate that we've gotten to where we are and the timeline that we have mm -hmm. uh, because I think we have a bit of a runway left to like hopefully continue speaking to this audience of, of people who want to be excited about families and want to make families a priority. And like, that's our goal is with every show we put out to, to get people pumped up. Like how mm -hmm. can we get people excited about this? And it's not excitement because it's like easy or like laughing all the time. It's exciting because it's important mm -hmm. and it's, it's like this miracle to watch miracle. your your spouse and your kids grow and change and improve day to day. It's like a battle, but mm -hmm. it's the best. So anyway. That leads us into person number two. Okay. This is your favorite person, evidently. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Um, so I think person number one, to kind of summarize, we are very naive, very young, very like smitten with each other, both kind of aimless. Andrew was headed towards football. I had quit working. I was not doing anything. Dating me was your full-time job. That was my full-time job. I did a couple of speaking engagements a year. That was it. Um, and yeah, that's that's all we did. And it was great. But then moving into engagement, I think, was our first massive transition of life. Because it was the first reality check of like, oh, shoot, something big is about to happen. Like, commitment-wise. And it makes you start thinking about jobs and your future and yeah. your life together. But for you, you were going into the NFL. So you, the draft happened. Um, you signed with Kansas City. And I started working again. And that was a, a really big, that was a really big year for us. I actually view that as the, like the year where you were almost all in on just supporting me and my dream, which mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for. And the year of like, brokenness and peak mm -hmm. desperation for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I got cut after three months of being with the Chiefs and I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. So I was sitting on the couch while Sean was one supporting me, but then you were also kind of doing your own thing occasionally. Mm -hmm. So you would travel. And um, that was, that was, I think an important phase for us to go through because you learned about me mm -hmm. and how I, deal with difficulties and obstacles in life. There was certainly a, a lot that we went through that year with mm -hmm. bouncing from team to team to team. Um, and I learned about you like, wow, this is actually someone who's, I never thought this, but, mm -hmm. but you're not just dating me cause I was going to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Like you were there through the ups and downs, mm -hmm. which was so much fun to do together in retrospect. Well, and I think too, the transition side of that was if you look at who we were when we were dating, those kind of like aimless people who were just having fun to the year that we were engaged, that the commitment level was so much bigger. Cause like we were engaged, we were like committed to each other. And I did, I, I was like, okay, your dream is the NFL. You're going to bounce around now and try to make it work. And it's now my job to kind of like, support you be your cheerleader I started working again because you were gone so much and I I wanted to kind of have that that purpose and drive again which completely changed my personality because I no longer was kind of aimless just being that like fa fancy free personality I was working I was back in the business world and I was being criticized and judged and I had expectations and pressures and trying to make sure I did everything in a, a good way for you as well. So I think that our dynamic changed a lot. We, we learned a lot about each other that mm -hmm. year, which then the third person I think would be marriage, which would be, we were engaged for about a year and then we got married. And that first couple months of marriage was like, okay, we know about each other. And then how can we actually, take that to the next level and like get involved in each other's lives. So the, I distinctly remember some of the conversations we had about finances mm -hmm. and like, again, your insecurities of like, um, 
it was like a daunting subject for you to talk about. And you were shameful about it to a certain degree. And it was like, no, that, that doesn't even factor in here. It's like, how can we actually just have a discussion about, hey, this is this is the game plan moving forward as a team. Mm-hmm. Or the discussions we had about, there's a lot. There's a lot of those, we're, we're blending lives and making this happen together. I think a, a big change in the person I was that happened over the course of dating engagement to marriage was I feel like, with my scars of insecurity and eating disorders and body image and everything, just from gymnastics in my life, I've been very open about that. I felt like through dating and engagement, I tried very, very hard to mask all of it from you. I would talk about it every once in a while, but I felt like there was still that barrier of I had to hide it because in the back of my mind, I I was afraid that if you really saw all of it, you wouldn't stick around. And I think marriage was this harsh reality of now that we're married, there's you can't hide anymore. There was nothing. And so when we started talking about finances and started uncovering more insecurities and traumas and scars, it was a rough transition trying to be that vulnerable and almost feel like that that weak and small and grow back from it. I think we made the commitment and we were like, all in on it Mm -hmm. but we didn't understand how much of an honor it is that that commitment was a choice like Mm -hmm. i feel like now we're at a point where it's like hey all right we're married great we can either kind of like resent each other and and like only point out and see the flaws in each other or we can realize like wow this is very cool that we get Mm -hmm. to do this together and i think that's a phase we're at now which we'll get there uh at least for today (laughs) yeah but marriage was definitely a transition and um yeah like there's there's just a lot of dynamics with even sex and like the body image stuff and like that topic with people's history with Mm -hmm. sex is like super layered like there's some people who have grown up thinking that that's a bad thing and Mm -hmm. they're, they don't want to be around it at all. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that are shameful for whatever they've done in the past. And there's, I don't know. It's just like, Mm -hmm. there's working through a lot, a lot. And through the different phases of a relationship, all of that becomes uncovered. That's the goal. That's the goal. At least. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of things in speaking about like, being married to different people, I feel like with every vulnerability that becomes uncovered within a relationship, someone changes. They either become more free or more confident or more insecure, insecure, and that changes who they are. I mean, that changes how they act and how you perceive them and everything. So I think with us going through the different phases and unmasking more and more of each other and becoming more, more vulnerable – empowered both of us to become stronger people more opinionated more vocal more like set in our ways and our foundations and I think you you start off as this dating couple that's like aiming to please one another and you mask a lot of things and then as your relationship grows you start I mean we've seen it firsthand within marriage you start butting heads more and more because you become more confident in who you are and that that's harder to work through Oh, that's an interesting thought. In my efforts to make you more confident, it creates more conflict. Yeah. Wow. And vice versa. Because think about that for a second. Well, it's the same with you because you you have yeah. unlocked yeah. a confidence within me that I lacked for so long. And I would say the same with you. Like when we started dating, you were uncertain and going into the NFL, you did go through brokenness and when you were coming out of the NFL, going through the transition of trying to find a career and how to lead a family and all of these things, you've now gotten yourself to a point where you are the leader of our family and you're so confident and you're confident in yourself and we butt heads because of it. (laughs) Not because you're a leader, but because we've both created such like strong individuals. Yeah. We've supported each other to a point where we're both freaking stubborn. Let me put it, I I think as I'm reflecting on our first year of marriage, I would put it this way. Marriage inevitably brings out the true habits, the true 
lifestyle, the true choices that the other person makes. And I think we were in that phase that first year where we were trying to like hide mm-hmm. some of our more shameful things. Mm-hmm. But now we realize that you can't improve or you can't get to know each other or you can't even start a meaningful conversation unless it's, unless it's based on truth and honesty, mm-hmm. candor, let's call it. So you start at a place of candor and we realize, hey, Sean, I forgot to take the kids to school today as opposed to me saying lying mm-hmm. in some form. It's like I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. How do we move forward from this? It's mm-hmm. like I think we're more willing to start with the honesty as opposed to start with our selfish I don't want her to think poorly of me or I don't want her to think mad of me. We're still aspiring to be there, but man, it's exciting when you think about the fact that you actually can improve. You can change. You can grow. You have to be courageous enough to start with the honesty and Mm -hmm. to realize that, you know what? Sean has some flaws. Andrew, not as many, but (laughs) (laughs) I get it. Today's show is brought to you by Good Ranchers. Babe, you know what is right around the corner? Yes, I do. Do you? I do. Valentine's Day. And let me tell you, instead of flowers or chocolates, I had a fun idea for this year. I'm going to cook you a fancy dinner right here at home. I'm going to use steak from Good Ranchers, obviously. And it's going to be better than going out. You just have to trust me, right? Just give me the meat, babe. That sounds great. I love Good Ranchers, and I love that they're 100% American, hand-trimmed, steakhouse-quality meat delivered to your door. I've never thought that I could truly taste a difference in meat until I tried Good Ranchers in... Even like their ground beef, you could tell a huge difference in. We've tried a couple different suppliers and we love Good Ranchers. And we want to share the love with you this month as well. So right now you can get $30 off when you order any box from Good Ranchers and use our code EASTFAM. That's right. Whether you're on the grill or in the pan, nothing says I love you like prime cuts of beef, pasture-raised chicken, and premium quality seafood. You can get all of it at GoodRanchers.com. Perfect for the lady, the man, or yourself this Valentine's Day. Good Ranchers is the gift that keeps on giving. Ditch the usual gifts that just don't cut it anymore. Say it with Good Ranchers instead. So snag your $30 off with our code EASTFAM at GoodRanchers.com today. Love is in the air and it smells just like, you guessed it, babe, Good Ranchers. Save $30 on your unique gift this Valentine's Day by visiting GoodRanchers.com. We'll link it down below and let's get back to it. I I do want to reflect back though on the three different people that we talked about because... I think the first one was the easiest. The first people we were. Less, least complicated. Least complicated and, but just least complicated because of life. Um, I think the hardest was marriage because that truly was our transition within our relationship where everything became un- unveiled. We were, all of our insecurities were out there. We were going through very hard phases of life. I was working full time. You were trying to fulfill your dream. It was very difficult. And I think my favorite so far wasn't number two, but is number four, which is I'm adding, which I think is after kids. Okay. Why? Because all of those insecurities that we went through, the stubbornness, the confidence that we've like helped each other grow into definitely is like at an all-time peak right now because we're so protective and opinionated over the future of our kids. But I feel like we're fulfilling our purpose now together. And to to look back at all these people that we've kind of become and morphed into and gone through, it's really cool to see where we've wound up. I will say, though, I say this all the time, it's different being married to a mom. Yes, it is. And maybe it's different being married to a dad. But like you, when you became a mom, it was like, all right, uh, I'm not joking around with the kids. Like there's no practical jokes with the kids because <laughs> it's going to end in an argument. Stuff like that. Obviously, I've never done like a practical joke. But I agree. Like a mom is different. You mean business. You do. You're the mama bear. But you also have to think taking a step back. Yes, it's hard. And I will openly admit that it yes it would be hard to be married to a mom especially like me because I'm very opinionated and protective over our kids but can you also say it's 
pretty cool to see. No, no, no. I, yes. I'm not saying this in a weird way. I'm saying it like I'm proud to look back at who I was when we were dating. And I was so meek and I was so intimidated and I was so insecure and all these things. And now I'm like, I don't give a crap. It's all for our babies. And it just feels good. It's great. I, I'm i trying to this a, just walk with me through this thought process. Okay. So we've, you mentioned that the, in the college days, dating was the easiest. It was mm -hmm. the least complicated. We had the least on number of commitments. Yeah. Right. I was playing football and doing school. I had pretty much two commitments. Mm -hmm. you I had, had very few. you. <laughs> a couple things is also sponsored by Apollo Neuro. We recently discovered the Apollo wearable and it's been awesome. Apollo is a wearable device that actively improves your body's resilience to stress. So you can relax, sleep, focus, recover, and feel better. It's like a wearable hug for your nervous system that helps you be a calmer, more mindful version of yourself. So the way it works is Apollo Neuro's scientifically validated technology helps calm your nerves and clear your mind, melting away stress so that you can sleep. I've been using it in the evenings to help me relax, and I've seen such an improvement in my sleep quality. It's honestly so cool. You can wear it on your wrist, your ankle, or as a clip attached to your clothing, and it works by engaging your sense of touch, delivering silent, soothing vibrations that help you feel safe and in control. I was skeptical when I heard of this, but I've been wearing it and it is a focusing device where it's mm -hmm. like when you feel this this sensation on your wrist, like you really don't think about anything else. It's almost like a meditation. And the more you use it, the better it works as it trains your nervous system to rebalance more quickly. Plus, it supports your natural circadian rhythm and helps you become more consistent with your wake up and bedtime every day. I mean, science is pretty cool, babe. And we have good news for you listening. Our listeners get a special discount. You can save up to $50 by going to ApolloNeuro.com and using code COUPLETHINGS50. Again, go to ApolloNeuro.com and use code COUPLETHINGS50. Let's get back to it. <laughs> We've grown to have more commitments. So yeah. now we have, we have the kids. Mm -hmm. We have each other. Like mm -hmm. marriage has become a legal commitment, right, mm -hmm. in a way that dating never was. We have family in town. Your parents are here. We have like payroll and employees. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have all the different stuff. Yeah. The moving parts in our life. We have probably threefold the number of commitments. And due to those commitments, the potential opportunities in the world has decreased for us, mm -hmm. which is probably a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's allowed us having fewer opportunities has allowed us to have a clear vision of what opportunities we want to pursue and what we want our life to look like, mm -hmm. which is an interesting side effect of having more commitments is you have fewer, fewer random opportunities to pursue, mm -hmm. which allows for clear vision. Yeah. And I agree with you that that can be, um, cause hard-headedness because you have a vision, I have a vision. So how do we actually make those blend? Fortunately, we have a pretty good dialogue going for how, how we can support each other, like how we can have a, a give and take. But I think we both feel there, there's a story about Nehemiah in the Bible where he's building a wall and people come to him as he's building the wall and ask him to do something else, meet a group of people or whatever it is. And he's like, I I cannot come down. I'm doing a good work. I can't stop what I'm doing because what I'm doing right now is important. And I feel like we both have that to us. Whereas before we didn't have, we were just blown with the wind. Mm -hmm. But now we feel like what we're doing with our kids, what we're doing with our marriage, with our work is purposeful and important. Mm -hmm. And you cannot distract away from that. We will not allow people to distract away from that. It gets me hyped. Mm -hmm gives me hyped it's also more difficult now than ever though it's more difficult now than ever I agree and I have said this before in other episodes but I think if I look back at all of the people we've been all the the, the milestones and transitions and things we've gone through I laugh at like giggle at our wedding day because I've said this before and it sounds weird, but standing at the altar, I thought there was no way I could love you more than I loved you then. 
Like I felt like I was on top of the world and I was just head over heels in love with you. And looking, knowing where we are today, I like giggle at that because it was so little. Like we've gone through very challenging times and dating, being married to four different people is hard because you have to like. Yeah, the transitions are not on each other. Uh, it's not on the same timeline either. Like Sean will fully become a mom, like pretty much the day the first yep. kid is born. And I don't feel like I really became a dad until maybe a year after. Yeah. Like I didn't ha- have that as an identity. Well, So then there's like a lag period of like Sean's a parent. I'm still acting like a chooch, <laughs> like kidless, you know, husband. And there's a lot of conflict that occurs. I think another way to look at that too is like you go through different journeys of life spouses at different times so when I wasn't working and doing anything at all Andrew was in like full-on getting his MBA playing football doing all these things and then Andrew tried to go for the like you started into the NFL and I started working I my work then took off and you got cut and so you were like in a low and I was on a high and then it just kept like reversing we were always like opposite of each other which made it hard for the dynamic of the people we were, but also made it really good because one of us always had that foundation that was solid at one point in time to support each other, mm. like emotionally. Yeah. But going back to what I was saying is like looking back at who we were on our wedding day, I just giggle because going through all of these ebbs and flows and heart like hardships in life has made me love you a million times more than I ever loved you at our wedding day. And I thought that was like the most I ever could. I thought like my heart was so full then, but it's, it just continues to grow. You want to make out right now? I love no, you, baby. I don't. I love you, baby. I don't. Get oh. off me. <laughs> Jeez. I was talking to Dr. Oster about this. Like, what is it about uh, parenting that creates such strong opinions? Like, moms yeah. have such stylized, wow, I can't believe you gave your kids milk. It's terrible for them or whatever. Like, and yeah. she talks about this, this concept that, as humans, when you invest in something, mm-hmm. your buy-in, your love for it, your affection for it actually grows. So, like, when you have increased cost to something, your care for it also increases. Mm-hmm. So, for us, we've gone through the stuff. Like, there's a lot of costs that have been <laughs> incurred is. in our marriage. There is. But as a result our care for each other has also increased, yeah. which is kind of a fun thing. And that's what, how it is with kids. Like those sons of guns are not fun all the time, <laughs> yeah. but you pour so much energy into them. You're like, well, I better love them. You know, yeah. I guess it's like a subconscious thing, but it makes me think of t- the the quote to know is to love. And like, whether it's a, this weird psychological thing or not, that the process of buying into something mm-hmm. unlocks a quality of love that you otherwise can't get. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for the future phases that we have together. I'm excited for the, that, that, that cost gets me excited about the future obstacles in a way, because I'm like, man, it's going to help me love you better. Like Mm -hmm. I'll probably learn something new about you. I'll probably, uh, it's a fun thing to hold your hand through life. And I'm thankful that you, that you've been patient enough to do that same thing with me. Mm -hmm. So here's to what we're on the fourth iteration of each other. Here's to the fifth, whenever that comes around, babe. Starting today. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp has been a constant in our lives for several years now. It really has been. We've loved using them, especially with how busy life can get. Having a therapist to chat with online has been a game changer. It has been. And for all the parents out there, we know how overwhelmed you can get on a daily basis. Having an outlet to talk to is so helpful. We truly can't say enough. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get you matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash eastfam today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash East fam. Let's get back to it. I think too, it's also cool to think about. Follow me through this thought process as we close. I feel like there's two different ways to look at life in general. 
glass half full, glass half empty, right? And I feel like so much of the world likes to get stuck on this concept of the when the honeymoon phase is over, it all falls apart. But I think the way I look at this, as we've like written it out, is our honeymoon phase was just not us. That's when you're you're trying so hard to do nothing but impress the other person by morphing who it is you are as like a real human. And I think the honeymoon phase is fun, yes, but now with every iteration of people we become, like you said, you get to know each other more. And instead of looking at that as like, oh, the honeymoon phase is over, we've chose to look at it as I know you so much better now. And because of that I love you more. It's amazing. It's cool. It is humbling though. I've said this before. It's a responsibility knowing that in marriage transitions occur, identity shifts occur, mm -hmm. and I am the person that most has influence over who you next become. And you have pers you have the most influence on who I next become. Mm -hmm. So how can I how can I best prepare myself to change you for the better? How can I manifest you to like buying <laughs> jewelry? <laughs> I will never become that person. I'll work on Except it. Except phase ordering, 10 of wait, Andrew Dean. Ordering this little <gasps> tracker. Did a partnership with Gucci. You should get it for me. I was looking at it. It's kind of dope. It so is? It's not jewelry. I wouldn't call it jewelry. But anyway. It is jewelry. Uh it's a ring. It's not jewelry. It's an accessory. Partnered with it's Gucci? It's an accessory. That is, oh my gosh. What a strong way to finish the episode. <laughs> yeah. Listen, there's a lot of content uh, on the internet about, yo, this is how you can improve your life with business and make uh, more money. And that's the best way. Like self-improvement is hustle and freaking wake up earlier and work out and get shredded. It's marriage. That's the best way to do it. Commit. Andrew's been watching a lot of hype videos on YouTube. Spe I'm just saying. Specifically one that he has on repeat. So. There is nothing like it. It is the most humbling. I would be such a douche if I was not married. I, I am a douche still. I'd be more of one <laughs> if I wasn't married. And with that, we're done. I'm still Thank going. I'm, I, I'm still going, babe. I'm podcast. on a rant. I know. Don't cut my rant You're off. You're trying to create some hype video on YouTube. We're done. <laughs> I was <laughs> Thank you for listening. I feel that way. Quit focusing on the freaking side effects when you can get the the main thing. You over it? Shot's done. Thank you for listening. That's all we have. I'm Andrew. I'm Shot. It's the East Fam. Out. <laughs> <laughs> great moments oh are God. born from great opportunity. That's what we've earned here tonight, man. No, no, that's what we have here tonight, man. Oh, that's what we've it. earned here tonight. Nine times out of ten, they beat us. But not tonight. <laughs> Wait, what's your I, speech or your high school coach? Oh. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't. For out in this world, you're fine. Success begins with the fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. <laughs> if you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in this world, you'll find success begins with the fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger, faster man. Sooner or later, the fellow who wins is the fellow who thinks he can. <laughs> You're, what do you mean you sit here with freaking sunglasses inside? Who's weird? Freaking. <laughs> Who's weirder? I'm hyped. I'm on one, dude. I got a good wife. Thank goodness. Yes. I got a good freaking wife. And I want more of that. Are we converting? Huh? Are we converting? <laughs> oh man.